Hello, this is Professor Teresa Pelkey. This is Session 8, Part 1, the Group By Clause. In this session, we'll look at some of the features of SQL that let you summarize data. This is a very common business requirement that can be used with almost any table. The overall concept is that SQL lets you group data or work with rows that have the same values in a column and treat those rows as a group. In this video, we'll look at the basics of the group by clause. You'll see how it is written and some of the rules that you'll use. In part two, we'll look at using sorting and selection criteria when using a group by clause. To get started, let's consider what sounds like a simple problem. The problem might be stated like this. Given the country table, get the total population for each continent and display the continent name and total population in order by the continent name. This slide shows an attempt at trying to solve the problem. On the left side, the select statement really doesn't try to get the total population for each continent. It is just used to list the data that is available. What you see is a list of continent and population values. We're not showing the country name, so there is no context for the population figures. All we know is that somewhere on the continent, there is a country with the population that is shown. The reason for showing the select statement on the left is so that you can see the data that is available. It seems like it should be a simple matter to add up all of the populations for each continent. So using the sum function that we learned about in the previous session, we write the select statement shown on the right. We're using the same data that we used in the select on the left, continent and population. The difference is we're using the sum aggregate function on the population column. The results are not at all what we wanted. Instead of getting back a list of continents in the total population of the continent, we get the grand total of the population of all countries in the country table. As explained in the previous session, the continent value shown in the result is meaningless. The sum is applied over all of the rows in the table so that the continent value that is displayed is just the value that SQL selected since we asked for a continent value to be displayed. The population of North America is not over 6 billion people. That was the population of the world at the time the sample database was created. The solution is to use the SQL group by clause. This clause appears after the from clause, as shown here. If there is a where clause, the group by clause appears after the where clause. The group by clause works with the data in the table to create sets of data. In this example, all of the rows that have a value of Asia for the continent column are considered as being in the Asia group or set. Each of the other continents forms another set. As shown on this slide, there are seven sets, seven continents. Now that the group by clause indicates how the data is to be grouped or formed into sets, the sum function is applied to the data that is in each set. This looks like it solves the problem. We now have continents listed and the total population for each continent. But what is going on here? We have an order by clause to sort the results in order by the continent name. But the results are clearly not in order by the continent name. If anything, the results appear to be in random order. Let's take a little detour for a minute and solve the order by issue. It turns out that the continent column in the country table is defined as a MySQL enum data type. You can see part of the column definition in the figure at the bottom of this slide where you see the enum defined with a list of continent names. On the previous slide, when the order by was specified as continent, the results were sorted into the order shown in the enum list. To put the results into alphabetical order by continent name, use the cast function as shown in the top left. This cast indicates that the continent value is to be treated as a character value. Keep in mind the enum data type is used with MySQL. It is not used with other databases like Microsoft SQL Server or Oracle. We can also get the populations of the continents in order by their total population. In this select, the sum function uses a column alias. It might look odd to have an alias that uses the same name as the column, but you can see the results in the result grid. 
The column heading is now population. On the previous slide, which did not use the column alias, the column heading was sum population. Another result of using the column alias in the column list is that we can also refer to the alias in the order by clause. So the end result is that we have the total populations for the continents in descending order by population. Now let's look at another problem, which is also a common requirement in many applications. The problem is stated as follows. Using the country table, get the country with the greatest population within each continent and region. This type of query is referred to as get the greatest of the set. Another type of query might be get the least of the set. As you can see here, we can extend the group by clause to include more than one column. Here we are using the group by with the continent and the region columns. We also use those columns in the order by clause so that the data we are working with is shown in that order. As you know, we can use the max function to get the maximum value. When using a group by, the max function is used to get the greatest population value in each set that is used. The sets are made up of the countries that are in a region within a continent. There might be only one country in a region, or there might be many. As long as there is at least one, there is a set for that continent and the region. So what we have with this select is pretty close to what we want. We have the continent and the region. Since a region contains one or more countries, we have the population of the country that has the most people. Only one thing is missing, the country name. This select would not be bad if we were satisfied with getting the greatest population in a country within a region without having to know the country name. But we would like to see the country name also. So we can add the name column to the column list so that we can see the country name. We keep all of the other parts of the select the same since it was already working. At first glance, this looks good. We now see the continent, region, country name, and the maximum population. But wait, for the North America region, the country of Bermuda is shown with a population of over 278 million people. That's a lot of people. In fact, the 278 million population is the value in this table of the United States population. So once again, we run into the problem of trying to use an aggregate function and pick out a value for a specific row within the group. This is not so different from when you first saw this problem in the previous session. At first, using the group by clause makes this statement seem to be much more complicated. But if you think about it, what we are doing is creating little subsets of the data when we run this select. When you use a group by, the query gathers all of the rows that belong to the group into a set. The columns in the group by clause indicate the values that will be used to make a set. In this group by, the continent and region columns are used. So when the query runs, multiple groups are created. Each group includes only those rows that have the same continent and region values. The end result of creating the groups is that the query now has one or more sets of data to work with made up of one or more rows that belong to that group. The max function is applied to only the rows that are in that group. Just as you saw previously, when you use the max function, there is no way for SQL to also return the value of another column. As nice as it would be for us to have SQL also return the country name that has the maximum population, it just doesn't work that way. Max, min, average, and sum just work with the column that is inside the function. So we've gone as far as we can with the group by. We can use it to get a value for each group, but we can't get other column values that are not in the group. You might think you can simply add the country name column to the group by clause so that it now reads continent region name. But if you do that, you now end up with even more groups, each of which includes just one row for each individual country. Again, the group by clause is used to determine membership of a row within a set. If you keep adding columns to the group by clause, you keep making the selection more restrictive. 
if you add the column name to the group by clause, all you've done is tell SQL that you want groups that include unique continent, region, and country name values. But never say never. It turns out that you can write a select statement that will return the most populous country within each group, with a group being a continent and a region. However, as you can see here, this select does not use a group by clause. In fact, it uses a subselect that uses a self join, which we have not yet looked at in this course. Although I won't be going into details at this time about joins and how they work, you can see that we are referring to the continent and region columns within the subselect. You can also see that the max function is used in the subselect. So if we can, in fact, write select statements that give us this capability, why use the group by? Well, if you look back at the group by examples that I showed you in this video, you'll see that the statements are simpler than this one. So if you can get the results that you need with group by, you would be better off using that. Starting in the next session, we'll be working with joins. Joins are one of the most important topics that you'll learn about with SQL, so we'll have a lot of examples of how to work with them. In the next video, we'll look at sorting and selecting when using a group by clause.